Chapter 38 Contentment We are all very prone to complain about many little things. If the weather is too hot, we long for winter. When it is winter, we long for summer. In either case, we complain. We want the weather to be exactly right, by which we mean right for ourselves, right for our crops, right in terms of our standards. We make like demands on everything. We who will not be perfect want perfection. We who complain resent complaints in others. Paul speaks to this disposition, declaring that, quote, Godliness with contentment is great gain. End quote. 1 Timothy 6.6 6. Contentment makes us richer than getting our own way. At this point, however, we must make an important distinction. God does not permit us to be content with evil. Those who use this verse to promote a moral pacifism are perverting scripture. Like Elijah, we must challenge the Baals of our day. With Joshua, we must say, in the face of all compromise, quote, As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. End quote. Joshua 24, 15. We must witness against evil in high places and low, and we must always act from the fear of God, not the fear of man. Godly contentment always goes hand in hand with moral obedience. We can never isolate contentment from righteousness or justice. Contentment makes us richer than getting our own way, because true contentment comes only when we obey God's way. It means recognizing that the Lord gives us better weather than we deserve, and that gratitude is a prerequisite to understanding and growth. Therefore, quote, let your conversation be without covetousness, and be content with such things as ye have. For he hath said, I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. End quote. Hebrews 13.5